Well, there's some uh, show business thing about uh, void following acts with children and animals. <laughs> and uh, I think we've got to add puppets to that, too. <laughs> okay, let's go. <clears throat> In 1946, when I was nine, my family moved to Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone. We lived in this stone duplex next to the visitor center. It was built for army captains. It had three stories and four fireplaces. We attended grade school in the Army Post Exchange Building. The attached army canteen was used for recess, basketball, volleyball, Friday night roller skating, square dancing, and extravagant Halloween and Christmas parties. In the 1913 Army Chapel, Catholic services were at nine Sunday mornings, Protestant services at 11, and Mormon services at four in the afternoon. The Mormons being, of course, the Church of Jesus Christ of later in the day saints. We swam at Mammoth's outdoor pool and Old Faithful's magnificent indoor pool. Both, deemed inappropriate in a national park, were removed in 1951. We were not allowed to have cats or dogs. <laughs> Wildlife abounded in the hills around Mammoth. Black bears generally ran from us. We saw grizzlies only a night at the Gardner and West Yellowstone dumps. We spent winter weekends skiing at a rope tow hill five miles east of Mammoth. In the 1980s, construction of a steel-towered Palma lift was widely criticized. Sadly, for the local children, another inappropriate activity was ended. Before the rail line was removed, summer employees, known as savages, came to Yellowstone by train. For entertainment, we locals watched the bewildered students disembark the savage special at Gardner. <clears throat> at the Lamar Valley's Buffalo Ranch, buffalo were fed during the winter and slaughtered to manage herd size. At our community's annual Buffalo Ranch picnic, we climbed haystacks and rode horse-drawn sleighs. As Boy Scouts, we climbed local mountains and earned swimming badges in the Chico Pool. We reclaimed an old cabin at Slough Creek and made winter trips there in downhill skis and boots. Cross-country skis were completely unknown to us. In eighth grade, we did not develop strong relationship skills with females. Uh, I guess there's too much laughter to fill in the rest of this here. I don't know. But, uh, well, I attended Gardner's New High School my last three years. The lone girl in my senior class dated the local forest ranger. We boys skied and took lots of cold showers. <laughs> blister rust is a fungus disease that attacks and kills white pine trees. Our blister rust crew lived in a remote tent camp below Mount Washburn. We spent our days searching for and destroying the disease's host plant wild gooseberries. If our fathers needed something, or we needed something, we built it. Photo equipment, coasters with wheels and skis, a diving helmet, an illicit radio station, a motor scooter, teardrop trailer, and gopher traps patterned after the culvert bear traps. McCartney's cave in front of the visitor center and Devil's Kitchen in the upper terraces reportedly contained poison gas. We lowered caged gophers into these caves, and when the gophers survived, 
we explored the caves on our own. In the 1950s, there was no winter tourism. Through an underground tunnel, we explored the empty hotel and other buildings. Finding a key-making machine and a printing press, we put them to use. It was adolescent bliss. As a Mount Holmes lookout, I enjoyed glorious sunsets over Hebgen Lake, crouched on an insulated stool during lightning storms, and thought the next gust of a September blizzard would take me cleanly off the mountain. We climbed the nearby hoodoos and in the Tetons. When the girl I was dating in Mammoth went out with someone else, a friend and I made a night ascent of Liberty Cap. Lack of the female can lead to regrettable actions. College dance bands were hired to play nightly throughout the park. We frequented dances at Mammoth's Recreation Hall in the lodges at Old Faithful, Canyon and Lake, ever in quest of the elusive female. In 1956 and 57, I worked on the construction of Canyon Village. The boxy, flat-roofed cabins we built are now being demolished. The magnificent 1911 Canyon Hotel, built on unstable ground, burned down while being demolished in 1959. In later years, I continued growing up in Yellowstone, skiing across Yellowstone Lake to its southern end, nights in snow caves over Fawn Pass. And although I never had a pet and few female classmates, I was blessed to have lived in that special place.